I'm Sarah Idu, and you're watching Brockton Community Access. That's true news coming to you. Today I have Allison Pinkover from Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. She is the planning chief for the current epidemic. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me today. Thanks, Sarah. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. So I just have a couple of questions for you. I just want to start off by asking, how is Brockton Neighborhood Health transitioning um, after the four-step plan has been announced? Yeah, so it's definitely something we've put a lot of thought into and continue to put a lot of thought into because we had to adapt so quickly um, as this pandemic rolled out. Um, and so we've made a lot of changes. We have um, the testing site at the high school and the testing tent at the main building and right. have really changed a lot of the work that we're doing. And so we would love to be able to go back to what we what we were doing before. Um, but I think we all know at this point that the reality is that it's going to look different for a while. And so our priority is making sure that we um, reopen some of our services the safest way that we can. And so that's really looking at how many people should be in the building? What kind of additional infection control measures do we want to take? Do we have enough um, personal protective equipment on hand to make sure that whatever staff we bring back to the building um, on a more full-time basis are protected and enough protection for patients too. So every patient coming into the building right now, which is some patients, we do have some patients coming in, need to mm -hmm. be wearing a mask. And we wanna make sure that if people don't have a mask, we have enough to give them um, and that there is you know, the right screening process in place. So right now, anybody coming into the building is going to be screened by one of our universal screeners in the front who wanna make sure that if anybody has been exposed to COVID or might have COVID symptoms, that we get them tested and don't um, allow them into the rest of the building. That way we can keep everyone safe. And so um, there are all things that we have to think through before we can um, go through each of those phases of reopening that the governor has set forth um, in terms of our operations at the health center. That's amazing. You guys are taking the, the perfect steps to make sure that you know, everyone is safe to make sure that your staff is safe, to make sure that people are coming into the hospital, you know, leave. Okay, so that um, is really good. I know that another, a couple of other hospitals are also in the process of planning and trying to make sure that everything um, is safe for their workers. What can you recommend to other hospitals that they do to make sure that everyone is safe? So I, I think that probably each, um, each health center and each hospital has a little bit of a different process. Um, and I think at the end of the day, the most important thing that we can all do is really leverage our experts. Um, so every organization yes. is going to have different staff who are experts in their own um, area of, of interest, right? So we have some doctors who really focus yeah. in infectious disease work and we wanna make sure we leverage them in our planning. And we have public health professionals who yeah. really understand like a population-based approach um, to the pandemic and we want to make sure that they're involved and then we have a lot of people who understand the, the inner workings of a health center or a hospital who understand what kinds of operations have to continue to be ongoing for um, the ability to see patients and so it's really being able to leverage the experts that you have on your staff to make a plan that both meets the requirements that governor baker is setting forth that the department of public health is setting forth and that meets the needs of the organization because every health center and hospital is going to look a little bit different. So um, it's really leveraging your experts to put together the best plan for um, what your organization needs in order to, to ramp up its services again and to keep its staff and patients safe. Great. What can you advise that citizens do to keep themselves safe? Because I know that you know our healthcare workers are important and um, you know, the people outside of the hospital, they're important too. So what can you advise they do to stay safe for the next steps? Yeah, so we definitely wanna make sure that we're still following the guidance that the Center for Disease Control and that the Department of Public Health have put forth around maintaining um, social distancing. And so we wanna make sure we're keeping six feet between us and people that we don't live with as much as possible. Right. We wanna wear a face mask when we're in public. We want to wash our hands and we want to make sure that we stay home if we're sick and really get tested if we think we could have been exposed to COVID, if we have any symptoms that might be COVID-like, 
or haven't been tested before at all, because those are really some of the key um, activities that are going to allow us to um, reopen through those phases if we're meeting those criteria. Because the more people we test, the more people we will find who may be positive, and we are able to do extensive contact tracing for those people and make sure they're isolated through their illness. That way we can slow the spread. Um, right. Because I think at this point we know that that coronavirus isn't going to go anywhere for a while. And so by continuing these measures, it allows us to continue to have access to the right level of healthcare for people who do contract the virus. Because we want to make sure that we don't overwhelm the hospital system. And we want to make right. sure that doctors don't become overwhelmed. Because then the people who are the most sick won't be able to access those services if they're overwhelmed. Yeah. So if we continue to practice um, those guidelines, that's the way through the end of this where we save lives and we stop the, you know, the virus from spreading. And I think mm -hmm. one of the most frustrating things um, about taking a public health approach to something like this is if you're doing a good job, nothing happens. And yes. <laughs> it's really frustrating because, um, you know, if people aren't getting sick, it makes it really easy for a lot of people to be like, oh, well, this is over and I can just go yeah. back to doing what I was doing. Um, but really, if we go back that way, it's going to continue to, to perpetrate um, the, the spread of the, of the virus. And so um, it's easy to be like, oh, well, people aren't getting sick. I don't need to wear my mask in public anymore. Yep. But, um, but that's not the case. And so we wish it was like a big glamorous thing where it was like, look, if we wear our masks, everybody will be safe and look at these lives. But um, it's, it's tough because if you're doing a good job, nothing happens. And so it's right. not really exciting. <laughs> in regards to testing, I know that in the past couple days, the rates for um, positive tests have gone down. Have you seen a decline in people coming into the hospital to be tested at Brockton Neighbor Health Center? Um, so we are still seeing quite a few people who are coming to get tested. Um, we're actually right. trying to increase the number of people who are getting tested. And so one of the things to keep in mind when we look at the percent of tests coming back that are positive is that mm -hmm. over the past two months, the criteria for getting a test has changed. So at first, it was um, very restrictive because there weren't a lot of tests to go around. And mm -hmm. so it was like, we're pretty sure this person might have COVID and we'll test them. But now it's really kind of opened up, which is exactly what we want. We want to be able to test as many people as possible. That way we really begin to understand how much of the virus is circulating in the community and how do we isolate people as quickly as possible? That way we can slow the spread. So at this point, it's a great idea to get tested. And yes. that's something that um, we really wanna emphasize to people because now the, you know, especially at the Brockton High School site, anybody has the ability to get tested regardless if they have symptoms or not, regardless if they've been exposed, regardless if they're an essential worker. We really wanna make sure we can get as many people tested as possible. Um, because that's one of the tools that is going to let us reopen in a way that is safe. So I know that you just mentioned that Brockton, uh, Brockton High is allowing people to just come on and do uh, testing on site. Some locations aren't allowing people to do testing unless their doctors are giving them a referral. So if you go to Brockton High, even if you don't have a referral or something from your healthcare provider, you can still just come in and take that test on site. Right. So you have to call the hotline first. Um, mm -hmm. And so the number for the hotline is 1-844, the number four, TEST, mm -hmm. T-E-S-T, one nine. Um, and so that comes out to 1-844-483-7819. And mm -hmm. um, the process is to be scheduled first. And the reason that we want people to get scheduled first is because it keeps the flow at the high school site going very smoothly and it keeps it fast. So if we had people just showing up, the site would get overwhelmed and people would be there for hours at a time, which right. is not what we want. So if we schedule everyone first, you're in and out in like five minutes. It's a really quick process and um, you don't need a referral to get tested. You just Perfect. call the hotline. Somebody from Brockton Neighborhood Health Center or from Signature Medical Group is going to talk to you and get you scheduled. That way you can go through the drive through site at the high school. That's amazing. Um, I'm so happy that it's, you know, available for someone to take because at first, you know, tests were very limited, but now everyone has access to know if they have Corona, because if you know you have Corona, you can quarantine yourself from, you know, infecting other people. So that is a great resource 
And I'm glad that you guys are offering that to the public. Besides um, Brockton High, are you guys doing another location or is that the one for now? So we do the majority of testing for like the greater Brockton community at the high school site, but we still also have a testing tent at the 63 Main Street location mm -hmm. um, for people to come and get tested. And so we save that site for people who might not have a car. So it's a mm -hmm. walkthrough tent, um, people who might not have a car, or if there's like large groups of employers who um, have employees that they want to get tested, we can kind of set everybody all up at once and have them go through the tent at 63 Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third option for testing right now through Brockton Neighborhood Health Center is through our COVID clinic. So usually on the first floor, we, we have an urgent care. And right now we've, we've transformed it so that it's a COVID clinic. So it's really making sure that people who are the most symptomatic who are coming to us, who don't need to go to a hospital, but need some level of, of medical care are able to be seen by one of our providers. Mm -hmm. um, they'll be tested for COVID and then also receive a much, um, a much more intensive um, amount of treatment as opposed to somebody um, who might be asymptomatic or doesn't have any symptoms at all. Um, so we wanna make sure the people who have symptoms are seen in the COVID clinic and then the people who are the most sick go to the hospital. Okay, perfect. Okay, those are all the questions I had for you to, today. Do you have anything else you would like to offer or anything you'd like to say or any stats, anything else Brockton Neighborhood Health Center would like to put out? I think the most important thing we're really trying to get across right now is to get tested. And yes. I know that it can be scary for people because, um, you know, it, it, it's, if you're positive, it means that you're going to have to isolate for a little while. I know that that's something that would be scary for me, but I also know that I really value keeping the people around me safe. And so if right. that's something that I can do to keep other people from getting sick, then I'm willing to do that. And so I really would, urge people to, to get tested, to call the hotline. Um, we'll set you up and, you know, we are closed for Memorial Day. We need a, we need a day off every now and then too. Yes, we're, all, day we're all a little tired, but we're going to take Memorial Day off. Yes. Um, but we really want everyone to get tested so that we really understand um, how much, how much virus is circulating through Brockton and how we can best help people who might be sick. And so it's, um, it's a really good idea to get tested. I've been tested twice now. It's a little bit uncomfortable. It's like not <laughs> the most fun thing, but it's yeah. really quick. It's really quick. And if that's something that I can do to keep myself and others safe, then it's mm -hmm. something that I'm definitely willing to keep doing as, as we you know, work our way through this pandemic. So getting tested is definitely the message. Um, and as, I mean, if, if people get tested, that's the way that we're able to reopen through the phases, right? Because we really have to understand okay, are fewer people getting sick? Are there enough beds in the hospital? Um, those are things we, we have to increase testing in order to know. And so um, in order to get back to some, some sense of what's a little bit more normal for us, we mm -hmm. have to get people tested. And so we would really urge people to do that. It's really quick, mm -hmm. mostly painless. It doesn't <laughs> hurt that much, I promise. It's quick. It's a little uncomfortable, but yeah, it's just a little uncomfortable. There's yeah. much more uncomfortable things we do on a yeah. on and a it's for a great cause. It is. It is. So yeah, definitely the message by and large is get tested. Perfect. Thank you so much for speaking to me today. Thank you for everything that you're doing and all the work that you're putting in. So on behalf of Brockton Community Access, thank you. No, thank you for having me and. <laughs> We're happy to do this work. We do it because we love Brockton and we love the community. So we're happy to do it. Thank you.